1835, Vishnupad Temple, Gaya. A middle-aged man named Kudiram, who is on a pilgrimage, encounters an extraordinary event while worshipping Lord Vishnu. A divine light filled the temple. Lord himself appeared in front of him and said, Your great devotion has made me happy. The time has come for me to be born on earth once again. I shall be born as your son. Kudiram, overwhelmed with emotion, said, Lord, I am inadequate. I am too poor and unworthy to serve you properly. Lord said, Don't be afraid. Whatever you give me to eat, I shall enjoy. His wife, Chandramani, had a similar vision in front of the Yogi Shiva temple in their town, Kamapukur, West Bengal. The couple rejoiced the forthcoming divine birth. On February 18, 1836, the child was born and would later be known as Ramakrishna Paramahansa. As a child, he had a profound sense of spirituality and showed a great interest in meditation. His parents also encouraged him to pursue his spiritual interests. Over the next few years, Ramakrishna studied under various teachers and gurus, including a wandering monk named Totapuri, who taught him the non-dualistic philosophy of Vedanta. The non-dualistic philosophy emphasizes the oneness of the individual soul with the ultimate reality. According to this philosophy, the material world and individual identities are considered an illusion or a temporary manifestation of Brahman, the ultimate reality. It asserts that the true nature of an individual is not separate from the universal consciousness, and the goal of life is to realize this oneness, which is achieved through self-inquiry, meditation, and the study of sacred texts. This initiation allowed Ramakrishna to experience a state of pure consciousness and transcendence, which became a cornerstone of his spiritual practice. At the age of 19, Ramakrishna got appointed as a priest at the Dakshineswar Kali Temple by Rani Rashmoni, a businesswoman and philanthropist who was deeply devoted to Goddess Kali and had a vision of building a temple dedicated to the goddess that would be open to people of all castes and backgrounds. Ramakrishna developed a profound devotion to the goddess who he saw as a living, breathing entity and the embodiment of the divine feminine principle. He saw Kali as his mother, friend and beloved and often spoke to her as if she were a living person. He often spoke about the importance of embracing the feminine aspect of the divine and the need to balance the masculine and feminine principles in order to attain spiritual wholeness. Ramakrishna's devotion to Kali was so intense that it led him to spend hours in meditation, fasting and performing various rituals and practices to deepen his connection with the goddess. One night he experienced Kali merging with his body and soul. Ramakrishna felt a deep oneness with the goddess and saw himself as a manifestation of her divine power. He had many such experiences and they were so powerful that they would sometimes cause him to lose his consciousness for several days at a time. During these periods, Ramakrishna's devotees would care for him and ensure that he was safe and comfortable. His perspective on the world became highly distinctive and unorthodox. He once saw a prostitute standing on the road and was struck by the profound spiritual energy that emanated from her. In that moment, he had a vision of the goddess herself Ramakrishna was so moved by this experience that he fell into a deep state of samadhi or meditative absorption and lost consciousness for several hours. When he regained consciousness, he spoke of the divine presence in all beings. Ramakrishna attracted many followers, including some of the most prominent intellectuals and leaders of his era. Swami Vivekananda, his disciple, emerged as a distinguished spiritual leader in India and the West. He is also credited with founding the esteemed Ramakrishna Mission, one of the largest and most respected spiritual organizations in the world. Mahatma Gandhi too revered Ramakrishna as one of the preeminent saints of contemporary India, and his teachings left a profound imprint on him. Rabindranath Tagore, the Nobel laureate, was a frequent visitor to the Ramakrishna mission and maintained a close friendship with Swami Vivekananda. Sister Nivedita, an Irish educator, was a well-known follower of Ramakrishna and devoted several years to the cause of women's empowerment and education in India. A.C. Bhaktivedanta, 
Swami Prabhupada, the founder of ISKCON, found inspiration in the teachings of both Ramakrishna and Swami Vivekananda and often referenced Ramakrishna in his speeches and writings. Ramakrishna emphasized the importance of renouncing material desires and attachments in order to attain spiritual liberation. He believed that true happiness and fulfillment can only be found by turning inward and seeking the divine rather than pursuing worldly pleasures and possessions. Despite his popularity, Ramakrishna remained humble and simple throughout his life, living in a small room next to the Kali temple and taught us something very interesting, the unity of all religions. Ramakrishna believed that all religions are valid and that they are simply different paths leading to the same ultimate reality. One fine evening, Ramakrishna had a vision of Jesus Christ, whom he saw as a divine figure with boundless love and compassion. He taught that the ultimate goal of all religions is the realization of God, and that the different forms and rituals are simply a means to reach that goal. He famously said, as many faiths, so many paths. The importance of personal experience Ramakrishna believed that spiritual knowledge is not something that can be gained through study or intellectual analysis alone. He emphasized the importance of direct personal experience or realization as the key to spiritual understanding. The oneness of God and human, Ramakrishna, taught that the ultimate reality, which he called Brahman, is not separate from human beings. He believed that every individual has the potential to realize their true nature as divine beings and that this realization is the key to spiritual liberation. He often spoke of the unity of all beings and the interconnectedness of all things, saying, know the one and you will know all. If you like our content, we request you to please show your support by subscribing and motivate us to make more content. Ramakrishna's final days were marked by profound spiritual experiences and teachings which he shared with his disciples and devotees. Although he never claimed to be anything other than a devotee of the God, his disciples would often see the images of different deities in his face. The intensity of these visions was such that his disciples would get overwhelmed with emotions and shed tears in his presence. He persisted in imparting his wisdom to his disciples until his physical departure in 1886. He left behind a legacy of spiritual wisdom and inspiration that continues to impact countless people around the world to this day. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section regarding this remarkable life.